So piggybacking off of my last video, when I spoke about the news of JT Daniels possibly coming to the University of Georgia, roughly 15 minutes after posting that video, the news became official and JT Daniels announced that he was in fact transferring to the University of Georgia. So what does that mean for UGA moving forward for the quarterbacks uh, that are already there, the ones that are incoming? Going to talk about that a little bit. I don't know the answer to those questions. Nobody knows the answer to those questions. Way too fresh, way too early uh, to tell. But looking at it right now, uh, we have five scholarship quarterbacks on roster. Jamie Newman, JT Daniels, Carson Beck, Dwan Mathis, Stetson Bennett. It's hard to say who is going to be the backup or who's going to be even the starter. Again, I think it's pretty obvious right now it's Jamie Newman. Um, come September, that may change depending on JT Daniels' eligibility, depending on what happens at practice and at camp to see who actually takes that starting spot. But all signs pointing right now, Jamie Newman is the starter. If JT Daniels is eligible, which I think he will be, would likely be the backup, which would then put Carson Beck and Dwan Mathis fighting for that third and fourth spot and likely Stetson Bennett fifth. We are not going to have five scholarship quarterbacks on roster come September. It's just not going to happen. Stetson Bennett may stay and just decide to ride it out and finish you know, his, his degree at UGA and call it good. To be honest, he's not an NFL prospect. He's a decent, serviceable fourth string quarterback. You know, that's what he is. Um, so he may stay, and that may surprise some people. Um, Dewan Mathis and Carson Beck, we don't know what's going to happen with them. Do they stay? Some people feel that Dewan Mathis kind of owes his life to the University of Georgia for finding the uh, issue, the mengioma or whatever it's called that he had in his brain that we essentially saved his life. So a lot of people are saying he owes the University of Georgia his life. He's not going to transfer. I don't necessarily agree with that. He was just cleared over the weekend for full contact, no restrictions. He's 100% cleared for games. He is ready to play. He's ready to compete. He's not ready to be a fourth string quarterback. He was a four star recruit coming out of high school, was committed to Ohio State when Justin Field, when there was, you know, swirling rumors that Justin Fields was gone to Ohio State. Mathis flipped his commitment, decided to come to UGA. There's also Carson Beck. What does Carson Beck do? Um, he seems to have kind of embraced. The position that he's in and is hungry to compete and the same thing with Brock Vandegrift that'll be coming in next year him and his dad were both interviewed they both said you know when you pick a school like the University of Georgia you don't just walk in there and expect to be the starter they are recruiting the best of the best and there's going to be competition at every position and he's going to do whatever he can to take that starting spot so we'll see how that plays out. I think Vandegriff is pretty safe because even with JT Daniels, you got to imagine that Vandegriff is going to get at least two years as the full-time starter at UGA, at least two years. Um, so I can't imagine him going anywhere else just for possibly one extra year of playing time in which he would probably be a backup, but you never know. Um, it's all speculation right now at this point. We'll see what happens. Uh, UGA did pick up a, another commitment over the weekend. Um, and I think that there's going to be more coming down the pipeline. Uh, Dylan Fairchild is the one that committed this weekend. He's a top 10 offensive guard. I believe he's the number seven offensive guard, according to uh, Composite 247 in the country. Very good offensive lineman, our 2021 offensive line class is looking ridiculous. If we can get uh, Ferguson, who I actually thought was going to commit this weekend, I think his commitment is coming very soon. If we can get him and if we can get Mims, 
that offensive line for the 2021 class is going to be absolutely disgusting, um, just like it has been just about every year. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens with the recruiting coming up. I think uh, Mondin is expected to announce towards the end of this week. A lot of people still not clear on the date. I stood firmly on this that I believe it's going to be June 4th based on his hidden cryptic message that he had. Uh, he will be committing at the end of this week is my guess and he will be committing to the University of Georgia which will obviously boost our class. He's the top linebacker um, in the country. Five star. So a lot of big things in the works right now. Uh, obviously, the JT Daniels news is kind of overshadowing everything at the University of Georgia. And again, we'll see what plays out with his eligibility. The reason that I think he is going to be eligible is the fact that he sat last year. He played um, 45 minutes last, last season before he got hurt. Game one, he got hurt, and uh, Keaton Slovis took over, and Daniels never made it back on the field. So take that as what you will. He already sat a year, and I think that there's also going to be a lot of transfers that are going to use COVID as an excuse. Um, Southern Cal being one of the more stringent lockdowns and uh, – you know, regions of the United States as far as the severity of the lockdowns and everything surrounding that, that may be used as also an excuse for him to get out of Southern Cal and go to somewhere like Georgia, which has already loosened restrictions and they will be back on the practice field next week. And I just don't see the NCAA getting involved with that. Uh, they're not going to want to pick and choose and say, yeah, you have a legitimate argument for COVID. You don't have a legitimate argument. I think that if kids are listing COVID as being an excuse for transferring, the vast majority, if not all of them, are going to be immediately eligible. So those are the reasons that I think JT Daniels will be immediately eligible. You may not agree with it. You may think that he has to sit a year. I personally don't. Even if he does, it's really no big deal. You know, uh, four or five days ago, JT Daniels wasn't even on Georgia's radar. We had no idea that he was even looking at UGA. Um, Jamie Newman was the starter. Carson Beck and Dwan Mathis were going to fight for that backup position. So if JT Daniels is not eligible, that's still the case. Um, we're still in a very good spot with Jamie Newman as our starting quarterback and two younger quarterbacks battling for that backup spot. Uh, maybe that affects Brock Vandegrift a little bit more um, if JT Daniels is not eligible. But again, it's all speculation. We'll see how it all plays out. Nobody knows anything right now. We probably won't know anything until late July, early August, probably at the earliest. So we'll see what happens. But uh, JT Daniels to the University of Georgia was official about 15 minutes after I posted that video. So a little credit there that I did go online and post that video before it actually became official. But uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think he's going to be eligible? What you think the quarterback room is going to look like as far as one through five? I've kind of already gone through that. I think it's going to be Newman, Daniels, Beck, Mathis, Bennett. You may have those jumbled up. Some people might have Daniels as the starter if he's eligible. Some people might have Mathis ahead of Beck. We'll see. But that's what I'm going off of right now. Let me know your thoughts. You guys have a great day.